What's up, guys? Welcome to That Creative Life. It's me, James Mathis. Today, we're not talking about alternative tunings, even though that's what you heard in the intro. Really cool one. It's F-A-C-G-C-E. Very unusual, but man, it comes up with some pretty chords. Sometimes those pretty chords inspire me to write worship music. And so today, one of the things we're going to talk about is how to kind of stop sometimes and take a check as, is the music that you are playing theologically sound? Because as a worship leader, that's something that's so important is to make sure that what you're singing falls into the right category of worship. And so we're going to look at three main things to check ourselves. The worship that we are playing is truly what we're supposed to bring before God. So... Number one, me-centric worship. So what do I mean by I centric worship? I me centric worship, whatever you want to call it. It's the songs that say, I thank God, I speak Jesus, I, 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 me, 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 what has God done for me? Who am I in my relationship with God? Which is kind of missing the point of worship. Worship, first and foremost, is to acknowledge who God is and then bring our relationship into it. it it's not oh, look at me, I'm doing all these great things in God's name or Jesus' name. That's not the point. The point is I'm worshiping you, acknowledging you for who you are, and I'm going to meet you there. And then I'm going to be thankful for who you are and what you've done for me at that point. But the concept of me-centric worship is missing the point because it's supposed to be us acknowledging who God is and thanking him for who he is and what he's done for us and looking at it from that perspective. So, number one, trying to avoid songs that are me-centric. And so, something you've got to pay attention to when you're looking up songs to sing on a Sunday morning. Next one. Number two is looking to make sure that what's being said in the song lines up with what you know about scripture. If it says that when we die, we're going to become angels and get our wings, obviously that's not a theologically sound song. That's not something that needs to be sung. If it's talking about Noah taking two of every animal on the ark, again, needs to be checked because that's not what the Bible says. If you didn't know, it says he took seven of every clean animal, two of every unclean animal. There's your fun fact for the day. But... You've got to take the time to use the knowledge that you have about scripture and what it says and make sure that the songs line up with that because there have been songs that I loved, really looked into, and I can't bring myself to sing them on a Sunday morning because I do not feel like it's the right spirit or the right message that's supposed to be portrayed in church as worship that we're bringing forth to God. And so taking the time to kind of look and check yourself is super important because sometimes we'll get too excited about a song and not want to really dig deeper. So let's move on to the third point. Number three, can you find scripture to back up what you're singing in the song? So if you are talking about a certain subject, and we talked about this in the last video, and you are looking for songs that kind of 
fit that category. So let's say you're you're preaching on submission, submitting to God, super important thing. Looking up songs that have submission and that have Bible verses to support what the song's saying, if it's scripturally based, those are going to be songs that are going to be okay that you can use because they are going to be theologically sound because they're scripturally sourced. And having that kind of backup gives a certain song the authority to speak volumes to people. And so that authenticity that everybody craves nowadays comes from having biblically accurate music that can speak to multiple people on multiple levels. And so checking to make sure that Bible verses support what the song says is so important. And that goes back to the second point, you know, do we get our angel wings when we get to heaven? No, that's not scripturally backed up. But surrendering ourselves and following God and submitting, that is biblically accurate. There are multiple Bible verses used to support that. And so those songs will have a, more of an impact. And so when you're looking into the theology of your music that you're leading worship with, think about these three things. They're going to be of the utmost importance and they'll help you be a theologically sound worship leader. So if you have any questions, drop them down below. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It would mean the world to me. Love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.